Hello, everyone. My name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be talking about severe weather that is going to be trying to make a comeback going into the later portions of this week into next week. But first, starting off, we have a day today where we have some severe weather and the potential for some tornadoes. Tomorrow's looking like just mainly some thunderstorms. The next day is looking like some thunderstorms over here in the western portion of the United States. And then going into day four, we have yet another slight risk that is popping up on our radar over here near Iowa. And then yet another slight risk on the day after that, all the way from the Great Lakes coming down into the Texas region. So we've got multiple days coming up of severe weather. But what exactly does that mean in terms of damaging winds, large hail, or are we talking about tornadoes? Well, let's go ahead and break all of that down. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you do end up enjoying this video. Starting off with the day one forecast here, as you can see, we do have a slight risk here for parts of Kentucky going into Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. We're talking about cities like Washington, Harrisonburg, Morgantown, Wheeling, Huntingdon, Parkersburg, Chillicothe, Maysville, Cincinnati, Lexington, and parts of Louisville. And then around that, we have a marginal risk. That's going to be a one out of five for severe weather. Not going to be as an elevated chance for those damaging winds, large hail, and the potential for some tornadoes. But there's still going to be a little bit of a chance for some of those here. Our tornado risk is quite small today, as you can tell. But there is a decent chance that we might see a tornado or two in this area where we have a 5% chance for tornadoes. We're talking about Point Pleasant, Spencer, Montgomery, Oak Hill, Craigsville, Weston, Elkins, Parsons. Clarksburg over here in parts of West Virginia and then we have Point Pleasant on the border there of West Virginia in Ohio and Lawrence Ohio also Grayson Kentucky as well with a 2% tornado risk around that uh, for Lexington going through Becky Harrisburg and Cumberland now that's not going to be the only threat for today we're also talking about the chances for some damaging winds here in the yellow is a 15% chance for 60 mile per hour winds and then the brown is a 5% chance and we also have a risk out there for some large hail and I wouldn't completely rule out some very large hail but the best chance is probably going to be for some hail between one inch to 1.75 inch or quarter size to golf ball sized hail and in the yellow that's a 15 percent chance for those threats and then in the brown that's a five percent chance now first starting with today we are going to have some upper level winds up there these are the winds that fly where planes fly and if you live in Alaska also where sometimes the plane doors fly off pushing this forward you can see that we are going to have a little bit of a trough eventually eject into this area and this is um we're going to see a little bit of a spreading apart of our wind vectors now remember when those wind vectors spread apart these little flag things over here this you see these ones are pointing up over here these ones are pointing out in this direction kind of spreading apart a little bit as this trough ejects right around 4 p.m here into the, the portions of the ohio valley going into west virginia and you can see some of our strongest values are going to start off over here in southern ohio and then eventually that's going to move into parts of virginia as our storms start to initiate the spreading apart of the wind vectors is what we call forcing. Essentially, the storms are like, I don't want to. And then the mama 500 millibar jet is saying you have to go to school or in this case, you have to convect. That's pretty much what forcing does. It forces the storms to convect. Now, coming down to our lower level winds at around this time, you can see that we are going to have a little bit of a jet streak down here, starting off over here into Kentucky at around 5 p.m. And that's going to start to strengthen a little bit as it moves into parts of West Virginia. As you can see, though, our winds are coming out of the west and going to the east. So when you compare that to our 500 millibar winds, you can see they're going pretty much in the same direction. Typically, if you want to see an elevated tornado threat, which I'm sure there's not many of you that do want to see that. But usually when you, we have these winds coming out of the south, going up to the north, that is when we start to see a little bit more spit in the atmosphere. So these storms are going to be pretty parallel to the line, the initiating boundary, which will lead them to be a little bit more linear and also a little bit more of a tendency for them to be outflow dominant, which essentially means they're going to be eating cold air. Storms don't like cold air. It's like anchovies to a storm. Storms like that warmer, moist air, which is more like pizza with bacon and pepperonis on it but the ingredients are still technically there if a storm can kind of tap into this environment just right it might try to spin up and cause a couple of tornadoes that's why our risk is so small because it's kind of a brief moment where everything lines up but yeah 
that lower level winds are going to eject into this area and then right around the same time we're going to have our storm food in place out here so pushing this back you can see that we are going to have an area of around a thousand joules per kilogram up to almost two thousand joules per kilogram over there in kentucky and that's going to push up into the west virginia area and essentially this instability is going to act like food for these storms this is that warm and moist air i was saying that you know these storms are going to want to eat rather than that cool air and you need enough warm and moist air for the storm to be able to be satiated in terms of its hunger and we do have enough here so all the ingredients are going to be briefly in place before as we get it to around 7 p.m seems like these storms are going to start to run out of instability and the tornado threat is going to kind of go down after 7 p.m still might have a couple spin ups possible but it really looks like at around 9 10 p.m the tornado threat's pretty much going to be over for tonight so it's going to be a very brief resurgence here of a tornado threat up here in the ohio valley in west virginia Coming over to our significant tornado parameter, which is something that just kind of takes everything that I just said and makes it a little bit more simple. Just kind of puts the tornado risk into a little area here so you can kind of imagine uh, what it's doing. You can see that it starts to elevate as we go into around 5 to 6 p.m. That'll probably be in and around our highest chance for tornadoes as that moves into parts of West Virginia. You can see here on the HRRR that it's more to the south here in the Western Virginia area. So, you know, definitely might see most of our tornadic activity further to the south and if some storms can take advantage of that which they just might then we could see a couple of tornadoes happen really starting off at around 5 p.m when we have some more supercellular activity before this you know forms into a line of storms maybe even starting as early as like 4 30 tonight and then eventually that's going to push off to the east into west virginia uh at around 6 p.m going to be in central and northern west virginia could have some thunderstorms as far north as new york and then eventually we're going to have a line of storms kind of push through the west virginia area Area, all the way down into Kentucky and then slowly slide off to the east as less of a tornado threat and more as a damaging wind threat as that pushes into northern Virginia and maybe still some severe weather will be possible over there into the western portions of Virginia before all of this kind of falls apart. The next day as we go into the 15th here could have a resurging line of storms back over here into Kentucky and Tennessee but as you can see not really seeing a whole lot of convection there because our instability pretty much goes away after today and then so we're really not seeing too much of a chance for severe weather with this mainly just some thunderstorms uh, along that line moving in through southern Kentucky going into Tennessee and Alabama uh, for the beginning portions of the 15th We're talking really early morning here so really not going to mess up too many of your plans unless you're a night owl coming up over to Thursday's outlook here you can see that we do have a slight risk for severe weather that's going to be for northern Missouri parts of Illinois and then also Iowa and Nebraska we're talking about Lincoln Nebraska City Omaha, Storm Lake, Fort Dodge, Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Des Moines, Creston, Maryville, Clarksville, Burlington, and Davenport here in the Ohio Valley. I guess this is not really the Ohio Valley. It's technically like the northern Ozarks. Maybe the Midwest is the best way to put it on this uh, area. But bottom line is, is that there's going to be a slight risk for severe weather as we go into Thursday later on this week. And then also the next day, we're going to have another slight risk all the way from the Great Lakes down through the Ohio Valley of the Midwest into the Ozarks and then down into the southern southern plains even including parts of Kansas as well and just to the west of Fort Worth Texas for now but again these are about four to five days out so a little bit can shift as we go into the future but bottom line is is that you guys need to start paying attention to future forecasts as we get a little bit more information as our models get closer and as our models get a little bit more accurate on what is possible on these days but let's go check out the models and see what they're saying so far and try to get an understanding of generally what we can expect out of these storms so looking at our winds that are way way above our heads and our 300 millibar heights this is pretty much what we look at to see if there's going to be any forcing uh in the area and as you can see we we're going to have this trough kind of move off to the east and then eventually as we move into the set the 16th you're going to start to see a little bit of a trough develop off here in the west coast now that's eventually going to meander and bring some upper level winds well into the iowa area here and you can see that we have a little bit of forcing here it's not a whole lot but just enough to support some potential thunderstorm activity and that is why we have that slight risk out there so let's kind of come down to our 500 millibar winds and see what we're talking about here yeah you can see those 500 millibar winds are overspreading this region as well and if we come over to our 850 millibar winds you can see that they're a little bit more perpendicular than what we're going to see in the ohio valley today so things are definitely there potentially for some tornadic activity but it does kind of seem like our lower level jet is a little bit in front of everything but let's kind of see when all of this kind of lines up for that severe weather potential so yeah you can see our instability is back over here in nebraska by 
around 1 p.m. So maybe might have a little bit of a shift to the west as we get closer here. And then you can see that uh, higher probability for some instability does make it up into Iowa at, at around 7 p.m. So there is a little bit of a opening here for some severe weather um, further up to the north. We might even see a risk spread as far down as into Oklahoma uh, for this day. But it's uh, kind of hard to really tell at this point as we don't really have many fine details and what is going to be possible uh, out here for this day because again we're four days out so we still got a lot of new information to come in but bottom line is the eps is definitely saying uh, some severe weather is going to be possible on this day and then as you can see our instability is going to kind of hang out here until we go into about the 18th and you can see that we're going to have another region here of some pretty high probabilities of some instability with our forcing mainly over here up into parts of the great lakes but also starting to overspread down here into texas oklahoma kansas a little bit and missouri as that pushes off through the east throughout the day so there is going to be forcing pretty much all the way up this line where and our jet max is going to be up here as well coming down to our 500 millibar winds for the 18th you can see that there is going to be an upper level jet there and then our 850 millibar winds are going to be a little bit more parallel the further north you go closer to the forcing and the further south you go away from the forcing that seems to be where we're going to have you know our, our biggest shot down here uh, for some maybe some stronger wind shear and also uh, you know some more perpendicular winds in the lower level winds so maybe a little bit of a more of a supercellular hail mode up here and more of a damaging wind mode further up to the north uh, for the 18th it's kind of the my first initial thoughts here and there could be some tornadoes in there especially with this much lower level wind so definitely a couple of days to keep an eye out on uh, as we move into thursday and friday of this week but let's just check this with the uh, gfs model really quick just to see how much consistency we have all right so this is going into the 17th you can see that trough ejects into this area 500 millibar winds overspreading kind of the same region so there's definitely some agreement here lower level jet maybe a little bit more perpendicular here on the GEFS, maybe not as strong or as wide as a 850 millibar jet here initially, but it kind of spreads over the same areas. So it looks like we're in some pretty good agreement there uh, with our instability kind of barely lifting up in this area, maybe a little bit further to the south with our main axis of instability, which might shift the threat a little bit further to the south. But uh, there is some at least decent agreement here going into the next day. Uh, as we go into the 18th, but also a little bit more shunted to the south. So there is some agreements in some areas, especially our upper level wind pattern, but there seems to be at least at this point, some disagreement in how much of our instability that we're going to get uh, as we move into the 18th. But I mean, 45% chance is still a pretty good chance there for enough instability for severe weather as far north uh, as the Great Lakes. So a quick recap, we do have a slight risk out there for today with a marginal risk around that. Moving into Thursday, we're going to have yet another severe weather risk over here near Iowa. And then going into Friday, we're going to have another severe weather risk after that. So multiple days here of severe weather as Mother Nature starts to get a little bit more active. Last but certainly not least, we're going to have some temperature changes as we move uh, further into the future. It's going to be hot over here in the southeast today. I mean, potentially some areas or a lot of areas actually getting up into the those 80 degree temperatures with those 90s and 100s still hanging out here in Texas, 90s over here in Arizona, pushing up into the California region there. That's going to be at around 4 p.m. today. And it's going to cool down as we get that low pressure system, bring a little bit of that cooler air behind it. And it's going to kind of stay cooler here in the southeast while still being really warm up here into parts of, of the central United States all the way up into Canada. This is pretty anomalous here. I mean, we're still talking about 60, mid 60s, maybe some isolated pockets getting pretty close to 70 degrees there in Canada, which is very, very anomalous uh, for this time of year. But as you can see, most of the eastern portion of the United States in the Ohio Valley going up into the northeast is looking a lot cooler than it's going to be today tomorrow and as i can push this even further you can see that those cooler temperatures are going to stick around for a little bit for that warmth tries to creep back in which it eventually will do as that lower pressure system kind of moves out of our hair but for another maybe day uh, or so here in the 16th it's going to be still a little bit cooler over here in the ohio valley with most of our warmth still locked over here in the central united states with the 80 degree temperatures kind of sitting mainly in nebraska kansas going into oklahoma texas also into arizona and california as 
as well with 60s over here in the West Coast and 50s and 60s over here in the eastern United States with those 60s predominantly down here into the southeast. And then continuing to push this forward into the end of the 16th, going into the 17th, you can see that generally that cooler air is going to start to really give way to all of this heat. And we're going to start to see those temperatures rise again in the Great Lakes, still staying a little bit cool up there in the northeast, but really anywhere besides the northeast and the northern western portion of the United States is going to be pretty hot here across the United States. And again, this is going to be around 1 p.m. Uh, here. We could have 80s and 90s and maybe even uh, be trying to break 100 degree temperatures in parts of Texas. But thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in. We'll be monitoring today to see if I need to go live. I'll be ready to go and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.